Hey guys, thanks for watching Red Dirt Rods. Now today, I'm gonna do some more car audio, but this time, we're not doing tech. We're not gonna show you how to install something or how to tune something. We're gonna talk science. And this is something that is really important to me in car audio because it's, it's something that nobody talks about very much. And that's the physics of car audio. This stuff just doesn't change. This is just facts. Every bit that I'm getting ready to say to you is just facts. It's just the science. So I'm going to tell you how to calculate how loud your system will be just based on the specs of your subwoofer. So the spec that you're looking for to do all of this is sensitivity. Nothing else matters. None of it. None of the teal small, teal small parameters matter. None of that. That's all for your enclosure. The only thing that matters is sensitivity. I'm gonna show you why. It's all physics. So we've got this set up right here, okay? I've already done my math. I have a cheat sheet because I'm not Mr. Super Fast Math Guy. All right, now for our subwoofer SPL example, we have a single ground zero 12 inch sub. This is a radioactive model and is a dual 1 ohm. I'm gonna show you what this looks like in one and two subwoofer configurations. And for our amplifier, we are just using a generic 2000 watts. That would be for one or two subs. For the math, it doesn't matter. So this particular sub has a sensitivity of 86. So that's 86 dB. Now, the way manufacturers measure sensitivity is they will take this speaker, just the speaker, it's not in an enclosure, and they will put it in either an anechoic chamber or what most places do because they can't afford an anechoic chamber is they'll take it to the roof of a building as high as they can get. They will put a SPL mic one meter away and they will play this speaker with one watt of power. Now the SPL that comes off of that, that's registered, that is the sensitivity. And that's why this is important. Now they play a test tone. I wanna point out something. All of these numbers, these are based on a single test tone. So with music, things change. Uh, your box tuning, your cabin gain, all of that stuff in your vehicle can change. It will adjust a little bit and go up a little and go down a little but this is the theoretical SPL limit of your system. That's what this is calculating. So we have 86 dB for one woofer, okay? If we add two woofers, that would be plus three dB. Every time you double your cone area, you add three dB. So if you had two of these subwoofers, it would be 89 dB. Now, if you add three, what's that gonna do? It's not gonna take you up to 92. It's gonna take you to 90.5. You would only get half of that because you didn't double it, you just added one. If you added two more subwoofers and had four, then you would add three more dB. That's why it's so difficult to get louder once you get everything powered up. The only way to add SPL is through doubling your cone area, doubling your uh, output wattage, your amplification, or changing your box. And we're gonna get into that here in a minute. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do one, and we're gonna do two, okay? So real quick, for our math, at one watt, one meter, we've got 86 and 89. That's one woofer and two woofers. Double your power to two watts and you add three more dB. This one goes to 89 and this one goes to 92. So by the time you get up to four watts you are at 92 and with two subs, you would be at 95. Then, to get another 3 dB, you've got to go up to 8. You have to double. This is double every single time. So you start from 1, and we're going all the way up to 2048. So, 
By the time you get to eight, you are at 95 and 98. 16 watts, 98 and 101. 32, 101 and 104. 10 and 113, 113 and 116. Now, this is with a thou this is with 500 watts. So if you put 500 watts on this subwoofer, before you factor in the enclosure and the vehicle, you're looking at 113 dB. That's what this will do. If you have two of them, you're looking at 116 with 500 watts. Pretty typical for people to start out with about 500 watts. But you get up 1,000 watts in order, if you want to get louder with this subwoofer, you're going to have to double your power from 500 to 1,000. So there's not really much point of going from a 500 watt amp to a 750 watt amp if you want to be louder. It's just not gonna make that much difference. So 1,000 watts, we are 116 and 119. Now our target is 2,000 watts and on the single, that gets you 119 and 122. So you may be wondering, well, I had two tens and I was hitting 130. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's because we're not finished yet. This is your base. So this would be if you had this subwoofer sitting in the middle of a field in an an or in an anechoic chamber at the top or at the top of a building, no enclosure at all, and you put 2,000 watts to it, this would make about 109, not about, it would make 119 dB. That's what this would measure. If you had two of them on 2,048 watts, you would be getting a reading of 122 dB. Now we have to factor in transfer function. Now transfer function is one of those kind of ethereal things. What we use in the physics world is we use some generalities. There are some vehicles are a little bit louder than others and some cars are a little bit quieter. It just depends on the transfer function. But transfer function is part of the physics and it doesn't change that much. We're talking about little bits. So the numbers that we use for a standard car or truck, okay, is 12 dB. We're gonna call this transfer function. Excuse my handwriting. 12 dB for a car or truck. Large SUVs, you might lose a little bit on this end here. So you've gotta adjust for that a little bit, but even then, I'm gonna show you an example uh, of real world SPL uh, from my personal experience that this, this is pretty close. This is pretty close even for a large SUV. Now, then you get into hatchbacks. And if you've been doing car audio for very long at all, you know that hatchbacks have really good transfer function. So a typical hatchback will get you 16 dB of cabin gain. That's what we call this. It's cabin gain, also referred to as transfer function. So we're gonna mark this here. So this will go for your Honda Civics, um, your uh, any Camaro, pretty much any Camaro has killer transfer function. That's why a lot of them in the early 2000s were being used for SQ cars because they had a really nice cabin game. Uh, so this is, this right here, <clears throat> You take this, so we're basing everything off of two subwoofers with 2,000 watts total. So we take 122 and we add 12 dB, okay? That takes us to 134 dB. Now right there, that answers the earlier question. Well, I had a couple of tens and couple thousand watts and I was doing 130s. Well, that's why. That's your sub, that's your cabin gain. 
that's your DB. Now this is a max. There's, there's not much, you can't go above this, you can absolutely go below this. This is just for, this still doesn't take into effect your subwoofer enclosure. So 122 plus 12 is 134. If you have a hatch, that's gonna be 138 because you're adding 16 dB. So we're just working with a standard car, so we're gonna keep, we're gonna, everything else we do is gonna be off this 12 dB cabin gate. Now we're gonna add a subwoofer enclosure. So if we're gonna take these two subs and we're gonna put them in a sealed box, you're done. That's it. You're talking 134 in a car or truck, 138 in a hatch, max. That's where you're, that you're just done. You don't get any boost from the sealed subwoofer enclosure. If you want big base, you're probably gonna be using a ported box. A ported box will get you anywhere from three to nine dB. That's all based on the design of the box, the tuning frequency, and the air ripple. We're gonna use a typical, well-designed box. Gonna average it at six dB. So at six dB, we've got 134 plus six for a well-designed ported box, but not maxed out. That takes us to 140. If we have this in a hatch, we're now at 143. That's just from your box. So this is a pretty typical system. Two 12s with about 2,000 watts on the pair in a standard car, that's your max. Now, this is all being done playing a single test tone. Again, this is not dynamic music. Dynamic music will change things. But running a test tone, this is where you're gonna be. Then we can talk about the bandpass boxes. So when people talk about sixth order boxes and things like that, that's bandpass. So with a bandpass, you can get big gains. Uh, just a prefab bandpass box, you're looking somewhere around 6 dB of gain. With uh, a maxed out bandpass box, you know, like what you see from some of the big SPL competitors where they've got, you know, big braces, just giant hole, you're looking at uh, about 12 dB of gain. So with a well-designed bandpass box, we're going to average it at 9. So you would be 134 plus nine gets us to 143 in a standard car. And then again, in a hatchback, you're talking 146. Now, if you max out everything, you do a lot of experimentation, you work really hard to build your box. If you're doing ported, you can up this another three, you can get your standard car up to 143, 146, or if you max out with a bandpass box, you can get up to 146 or even 149 with two of these subs and 2,000 watts. And that's pretty impressive right there. 140 dB off of two subs and 2,000 watts. That's pretty impressive. All right, now earlier I said I was gonna show you a real world example of this math. Well, that's where this comes in. So back in 2004, when I still worked for Rockford Fosgate, we had just designed this box. We were working on a few different uh, experimental designs for prefab enclosures. And this is one of the ones that we came up with. We were working on a concept of street base. So this subwoofer box is ported to uh, tuned to about 40 hertz. So it would be big, loud, and boomy. It's not a sound quality thing. This is just about getting loud. So we took this particular box, this actual one, put it in the back of my 87 Suburban. We loaded it with this specific Rockford Fosgate Punch HX212, and we ran it on a single BD1500.1 amplifier. We had tested that amp in our shop. It made 1,941 watts. Uh, this is all back in 19 years ago. 
and the records of this are still on the DB Drag Racing website. If you look up uh, Jefferson Bryant on dbdragracing.com, you can see this one from 2004. So this particular subwoofer has an SPL of 88. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, that subwoofer has a higher SPL sensitivity than that Ground Zero, uh, which has 86. The Ground Zero handles 1500 watts. This one handles 1000 watts. Subwoofers, high output subwoofers, often will have slightly lower SPL ratings because they have, can handle more power. It's just all part of the design. It's part of your uh, selection process. It should be part of your selection process when you're picking out your equipment. So this specific subwoofer, this enclosure in a large SUV, 87 Suburban all the way in the back, playing just bass music, not a test tone, we did 134.8 dB. The theoretical max is 139. So that kind of shows you what you can do. You've got room to tune, room to adjust, and get that system up from 135 to 139 if you dial everything in and you have it maxed out. Maxing it is tough. Getting that last 10% is always the hardest but that shows you theoretically how loud your system should be and if you're significantly under that then you need to do some tuning that's all there is to the physics of car audio when it comes to spl when it comes to sound pressure level it's sensitivity power transfer function subwoofer enclosure and that's it if you follow the math for your particular system and you're significantly below what the math says, and you've double checked your math, then either your amplifier isn't putting out what you think it is, or you've got a lot of tuning to do. And that's the beauty of car audio. The math is there. You know what it theoretically should do. If it doesn't do that, then you've got a little bit of work. I'll drop a link in the description for my website where you can find all of this math and lots more. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Let's make magic.